So the heart of our rapid shutdown system is the birdhouse. The birdhouse does come in red or gray. Um, interestingly enough, it was designed around uh, fireboxes in New England. And because of that, a lot of the fire marshals and firefighters in New England don't want uh, them to be in red because they will uh, give mixed signals. They're afraid, you know, cause somebody in the middle of the night will go out and push one to uh, call the fire department and actually to shut off the neighbor's PV array. So it does come in uh, industrial gray and red, as you see. And it is uh, high, hardwired to many of our disconnecting combiners or battery disconnect modules using 600 volt Cat5 cable. We do have a UL listed USC2 600 volt 90 degree C Cat5 cable that is direct burial and also UV resistant available. There's a picture of the gray one. Um, basically 2014 is requiring what they call 690.12, rapid shutdown of a PV system on buildings. The system has to come below 30 volts within 10 seconds and that's within uh, 10 feet of the array if it's um, outside the building or within 5 feet of the array if it comes inside the building. The original intent of 690.12 did include a lot more language about battery-based inverters generators, just the whole system as a whole. Um, 690.12 left it pretty vague and UL and everybody is in the process of uh, uh, kind of defining that and you know that's also going to depend on um, inspectors. Unfortunately when something is left vague in the NEC that opens doors for each inspector to interpret it you know his own way if you will. Um, something I do want to point out as we get going here is all of the components are listed to you know the, the proper UL listings except for the birdhouse itself because there was not a listing to list it to. Um, UL now has a standard and it is at UL. It's been there for about two and a half weeks and we do anticipate that we should have a ATM from UL so the birdhouse will actually be UL listed. The whole system will be listed to meet the intent of 690.12 very very shortly. So what we're looking at here is kind of a, a catch-all of everything, if you will. We have the solar array over here on the left. We have a disconnecting combiner of some form here on the, you know, beside it. And of course the birdhouse that interfaces of everything. This next box over here is what we call an SOB or shutoff box. And the main reason for this in this application is because the grid tie inverter capacitors may take longer than 10 seconds to bleed down. So if you get into a scenario where that's the case and the inspector is really, uh, you know, pushing that fact, um, you know, we do have a box that you can put between the grid tie inverter and everything so they're both shut down at the same time. I have a feeling most inspectors will probably let that slide, but if that ever comes up, we do have that. The shutoff box has a lot of other uses that we'll talk about a little later. And then as we move on, you'll notice in this case it's an AC coupled system. Here's the battery-based inverter. It will have disconnect modules in it, shut it down. And then we have a breaker that can be used to kill the run signal and the 240 volts from the generator if you want to shut that off as well. So we can, we can actually, you know, between a lot of our remote trip breakers and our other boxes, we can actually bring the whole system down, you know, at the single push of a button and, uh, and meet the intent or the original intent of 690.12. And here is a picture or, or wiring diagram of the internals of the birdhouse, if you will. So there's a little jumper that has to be installed over here for the battery backup. There's a little tab here for the memory. You have to remove the paper. But basically what it really boils down to is there's going to be two Ethernet jacks, RJ45 jacks. And, you know, there's a, a basically an upstream and a downstream, if you will. They're bidirectional. It doesn't matter which one you use. But, you know, you could put this in the middle of a chain or you could put it at the end of, end of a chain, but you would bring your combiners in with Cat5 cable and go back out to other combiners or to, you know, a disconnect module. It does have auxiliary contacts, so it can be interfaced with, like, a building fire system, if you will, fire alarm system. So if you needed that to set off a fire alarm or trigger the, you know, the, uh, the alarm company when it was pushed, or if you wanted it to be triggered, you can use these remote contacts and you can trigger this when the fire alarm in the building goes off. And then, of course, it has a 120 volt AC input. So the birdhouse, uh, to give you a little rundown, what happens here is in the combiner box is a power supply board that stores the energy to turn the combiner box off. 
it will actually store enough energy to turn itself off and hold that energy for about eight hours. And then what it does is it sends down a trickle charge to this box, which has rechargeable batteries in it. That will actually hold a charge for about seven to ten days, depending on the size of the system. And then you have a third redundancy, which is you can bring a dedicated branch circuit, 120 volt branch circuit into it to keep those batteries charged if there should be you know, weeks and weeks of snow or something and there's no, uh, no input on that birdhouse. This is the wiring diagram for the what we call the bird nest or the power supply board that goes in the combiner. So you can get the you can get all the combiners or DLTLs or SOBs, which we'll we'll describe all those later. But you can get all those pre-wired with the power supply board by adding a dash PSB to the end of it, and that should be documented on each product um, as you look at it on the rapid shutdown section of our website. Um, but if you do have a combiner and you need to add the power supply board, they can be purchased separately and installed. It's a pretty easy installation. As you can see here, um, there's a black and a red wire, PV positive, PV negative. That's so that this, this will be charged from the PV array during the day. And then you have your four wires that go to the shunt trip switch um, in, in the uh, uh, remote trip switch in the combiner. So you have the, the actual switch, if you will, the ones that actually switch it, and then you have the feedback. That's what gives us our positive feedback to let us know the switch actually opened. The uh, other thing I want to point out about the power supply board is it does have an upstream and a downstream, and that is polarity sensitive, and I believe that's got to do with the charging circuits and the blocking diodes so it doesn't feed upstream. So if you only had a single birdhouse in a single combiner, you would go to the downstream dash birdhouse jack out to the birdhouse. And then if you had a second combiner over here, you'd come out of the upstream and go into the downstream of the of the combiner, you know, upstream from that. And this is a sample wiring diagram of our battery disconnect module, the MNBDM. And what this does is this interfaces with all of our remote trip breakers and allows you to turn off the large battery breakers or the other breakers, um, any of our remote trip breakers you know, for other uses, be it turning off a battery-based inverter. This may be a, an AC coupled system and you may want to turn off the battery-based inverter at the same time that you turn off the, uh, you know, the grid tie inverter. So this could be used, for instance, on an SMA inverter to turn off the battery breaker and shut the SMA off during a rapid shutdown. And uh, basically what this is showing is just how it works. It gets, uh, it gets the two remote trip wires to the breaker and then it gets a signal wire from the breaker and that's how it's powered from the switch side of the breaker and that way it knows when the breaker is open and it sends feedback back to the birdhouse and also these jacks are not directional so you can plug into either one so you could daisy chain them doesn't matter which one you go in and which one you come out and I do have a hand up um, I don't know if you want to add a question if you want to just uh, type it in I can unmute mute people if they need to be as we go um, let me unmute uh, this person and see if they've got a question. Uh, go ahead. Okay, maybe not. Um, yeah, if you've got a question, try to type it in. We have a we have a pretty large room today, and it might get uh, might get problematic if we unmute everybody. So uh, stop me if you do have a question, and otherwise I'll keep going. So the uh, like I said, the power supply board battery disconnect module. Uh, we have a line of remote trip breakers. All the SMAE panels come with remote trip battery breaker installed in them. We are now stocking the 175 amp, the 250 amp remote trip breakers. We have a 125 amp remote trip breaker. We have a 600 volt DC 16 and 20 amp remote trip breaker. And we have a four pole 100 amp uh, well, it's actually two poles on the 100 amp, and then it's got a 1 amp pole, and then it's got the shunt trip uh, pole. Uh, that is AC or DC. So some of the things to talk about and be aware of in rapid shutdown, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, the system that we currently have is uh, it's a remote trip switch. So when you push the button, the switch opens, and you go back up and turn it off and turn it back on to reset it. Uh, there is another way of doing that, and we will be working on that as well in the future, and that's contactor-based, where you send 24 volts up to that. And as long as the 24 volts is present, 
the uh, system is on. Take the 24 volts away, the system goes off. That sounds uh, elegant on the surface, but a couple problems with that is uh, it's pretty hard to do feedback, so you don't really get positive feedback from the contactors. The other issue you run into is on an inverter, say like the Sunny Boy TL series with the backup power, you cannot use a contactor-based combiner because when the grid fails, the contactors will open. You have no way to manually close them long enough to get the actual uh, backup power to come on on the Sunny Boy. Any of you that have used the Sunny Boy know that you actually have to wait till the grid fails. You turn a switch on, and in about 45 seconds, the receptacle turns on, and you have convenience power or you know backup power. So if you had a contactor-based combiner, that would just never work for you. You wouldn't have you know, you wouldn't have the power to turn that inverter back on. So there's pluses and minuses to both of them. So stuff you need to be aware of as you move forward. Um, some of the other things we don't know what's happening will be 2017. We don't know whether we should expect a more revised definition of rapid shutdown or if we should uh, expect module level shutdown. Some of the people in the know, uh, like Bill Brooks, for instance, uh, seem to think that we will be going to module level shutdown full stop and each module will have to be under 30 volts. That presents its own unique challenges because uh, the definition of under 30 volts is even if you cut a wire, I'm understanding. So now we're trying to get the modules under 30 volts. So it's kind of a, it's an unknown right at the moment what the future code will bring. Um, but what we do know is currently 11 states are adopting 690.12 by July, and 16 states will have fully adopted it by the first of the year. And a lot of states are actually bypassing 2011 and going directly to 2014 um, because of some of these things like this that are considered safety, yeah, and they want to get it into you know into place sooner than later. So it is coming. Um, you know the, the fact that everything is at UL, I believe we have one of the only listed systems actually available for purchase. So that's um, that's going to make it a little interesting in the beginning. But as we all get hit by this rapid shutdown, you know, we are ready. We do have products ready, and uh, we are here to help you. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is that uh, you can use a single birdhouse with multiple combiners, or you can use three or four birdhouses with one combiner, or any combination thereof. So it's a, it's a fairly flexible system. The only real issue you have with the birdhouse is that they all need to be together. So it's a daisy chain, and you wouldn't want a birdhouse on one end of the daisy chain and one on the other end just because of the way we do the redundant feedback loop. And again, like I said, we are not we are working on a contactor based system. The initial system that we're seeing here today is not contactor based. And I do have a uh, I do have a couple questions. One is this is more for central and string inverters, am I correct in understanding? And yes, if you had a micro inverter, uh, right at the moment those are not uh, being uh, put into 690.12 because they're AC and they do shut down when the grid shuts down. However, there is a code article, and I don't remember the article, that is requiring unmanaged wire or wire that is not in metallic raceways, I believe, to have arc fault protection on that, which means that the end phase microinverters and stuff, the way the code is actually written, they're required to have arc fault circuits to protect them. Of course, at the moment, there's nothing readily available for that, so they're able to claim 90.4 because there is nothing, but there there will be arc fault um, combiners coming on the market for AC. And as soon as that does, all the microinverter crowd will have to move to arc fault combiners. So it kind of levels the playing field between the uh, micros and string inverters. Uh, next question is auxiliary contacts or contactors available are available for feedback. You, you can on some of the contactors on the larger ones, you can get an internal contact on that that gives you feedback. It does, however, lower the opacity of the contactor and it's, it makes it a little tougher. If you're trying to do something like a transformless inverter, those big contactors make it um, make the price kind of unbearable. So we tend to go to smaller contactors and at the moment the UL standard does not look like it's going to require feedback. Um, I'm not sure where that's going to go because in, you know, in my humble opinion, the system is fairly useless without feedback. Um, can I explain the last part about not contactor based? So essentially there's a couple ways you can do shutdown of a system in a combiner box. We'll simplify it to the combiner box. You can put a DC contactor up in the combiner box that takes power 
24-7 and stays in the normally closed position, or it stays in the closed position, I'm sorry, it would be a normally open contactor. It would have power applied to it 24-7, it would stay closed. If the power is removed from it, it will open up and break the circuit. So that's what we call contactor based, and again, it does have a couple shortcomings. The other way of doing that is a remote trip switch that when you send it a pulse, it will open up and quit passing voltage down to the ground and it will require manual intervention to be reset. So they both have their pluses and minuses. Uh, a remote trip switch is typically, typically going to be a lot less idle draw, but it does require you to manually intervene to reset it. A contactor is going to be larger idle draw, but it's going to be more interactive. So if the grid fails, it's going to open. When the grid comes back, it's going to close. So a lot of it depends on what you actually have to do, what your goal is, and what inverter you're using. Because if you've got a customer that's using a backup power inverter, they can't use a contactor base. So there's, there's a couple pluses and minuses there. OK, we'll move on a little bit. So we have some additional boxes at ETL right at this moment. Um, and those are the SOBs. I'll talk about those a little bit longer, a little bit later, and they have a couple functions we'll talk about, but they're, um, they can be used to accommodate the grid tie inverter input bleed down problem, or they can be used on a transformless system that has multi-channel MPPT. We do have a simpler contactor based systems in the development. It will have a similar birdhouse, but the birdhouse will have a 24 volt power supply in it and a locking push button. So when you shove the button in, it will latch in and require a key to unlock it. And that will break the 24 volts to the roof and uh, shut the combiner down. All of our systems currently have positive feedback showing the system actually did something when the button was pushed. So on both systems, on what we're calling right now Birdhouse 1 and Birdhouse 2, be it either remote trip or contactor based, they both have you know, fail safe. So in either case, if the cable is burned through, chewed through, cut through, it's going to shut the whole system down and take it offline. Um, the difference between the 1 and 2, uh, Birdhouse 1 is remote trip, so it does give you full feedback, it gives you all the features. Uh, Birdhouse 2 will be contactor based, so you will not get feedback. It will just say, you know, solar off because it will assume it's off because it, it removed the power from it. And both birdhouses do also have audio files in them um, with some fairly simple voice commands. We've had uh, had a little fun with those in the beginning, but now it's got a pretty serious, um, simple voice prompts for each, you know, function that it does. So now we're going to go through, and I want to talk about each actual box that we have that works with the rapid shutdown. And uh, what you're looking at here is what we call the DL. TL or dual transformless. So those of you that are familiar with like the new, you know, Aurora and, and SMA inverters, they're transformless and they're typically multi-channel MPPT. So you can put mismatched uh, arrays on each channel, or you can put if there's a little shading, one channel won't affect the other channel. But with that in mind, you now have four conductors that need to be broken, and or possibly some combining need to happen. So the DLTL is actually designed for that. It's designed to combine two strings per channel and output four channels, or two, uh, two channels, I'm sorry, four conductors. So it'll take in you know, two positives and two negatives for one MPPT channel, two positives and two negatives for a second EP, MPPT channel, and then it'll put out MPPT channel one and MPPT channel two to that inverter. So if you've got a Sunny Boy 5000 TL-22, it's got four input terminals. It's got PV positive one, PV positive two, PV negative one, PV negative two. And those are two separate uh, MPPT channels that can run at different voltages. So with that in mind, we need basically two separate combiner boxes to isolate them from each other. And that's what this is doing. It's giving you the four poles of the switch, and it's giving you, it, this in this particular one, it's actually combining to go out to that. So this is good if you've got a little larger inverter, you want to put a couple strings on each each MPPT channel. Uh, the next one, you know, that actually comes in a 3R version and a 4X version. And in typical fashion with all of our boxes, we give you the strain release and the whole plugs, et cetera, that you need 
you know, to fill up the unused holes or to bring your PV wire in. We also have clear um, plastic dead fronts in all of these too, so that you won't reach in and touch anything live or drop a screwdriver in there or whatever. The 3R version of all of our combiner boxes can go from vertical all the way down to 14 degrees or a 312 pitch roof. So they can go from standing right straight up vertical down to a 312 pitch roof. The 4X combiners can obviously go in any direction you desire because they are rated for up to six feet underwater. So this is the same as the first box we just looked at, except for it's in a 4X chassis. And here's just a real quick wiring diagram of what that looks like electrically. So you can see you bring in two positives, run it through a pole to switch out to string one, back from negative of string one through that pole, and out to the two fuse holders. And then you repeat that on the other side. And again, just pointing out here, like I said earlier, this is important on the contact, I mean on the uh, SMA TL series, if the customer wants to retain their, batter, their uh, backup power. Otherwise, if you have a contactor-based system, they're not going to get that receptacle to turn on. And this is the MNPVHV16-TLTL. And again, it's the, uh, it's the same exact thing as the last one we looked at, except for this one takes four strings per channel. So this is made to take eight strings and output two strings to a uh, dual-channel MPPT transformless inverter. Again, clear plastic dead front can have the power supply board uh, pre-wired in by adding a dash PSB, comes to follow the strain release and hole plugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This one is only available in 4X. On the larger boxes, we only do 4X. And same thing, simple wiring diagram, just showing four positives going in through a pole to switch, back over and back out. Uh, one thing I want to point out is each one of these poles is 100 amps. So we're not using them to their full potential here, but that's all that's uh, required for the four fuse holders. But this is a 100 amp per pole switch. Now I want to talk about the SOBs a little bit. And the SOBs are actually currently at ETL. We should have their blessing uh, pretty much any day now to mark these and start shipping these. And what the SOB is, is it's a shutoff box. So in the simplest terms, as you see here, it's got four wires. So it's a transformless. So you'd have a, a positive and negative go through the switch and come back out of the switch and onto the inverter. So if you've got an inverter that has a you know single or a dual channel MPPT and you just need a disconnect, you don't need a combiner, but you need a transition box and a disconnect and possibly remote shutdown, the SOB will work for that. Now the SOB comes in four models. It comes in the model you see here, which is a what we call a two-pole, because it's made to break one positive and one negative, and it is in a 3R version. And here's a simple wiring diagram showing that. Basically, like I say, PV positive in from the array, through the switch, back out to the inverter, and the same with the negative. Now you can convert this to a grounded system in the field, and I'm not sure if the wiring diagram is in here. Okay, it's not, so let me back up and show you that. Um, to convert this to a grounded system in the field, you would take a, and put a jumper in here in these two wires. So then your positive would go in, go through both poles, and go back out. And again, in keeping and reminding, this is a 100 amp switch. In this case, we're using it at 30 amps because that's typically all that would be needed because you can only uh, run two strings without fuses. But this is a 100 amp switch, so this box may have other uses uh, to you in the future without this terminal block in there. And there is the same two-pole SOB, but in, in NEMA 4X. Again, just like all the rest, comes with all the whole plugs, strain reliefs, clear plastic dead front, et cetera, et cetera, to do what you need to do with it. And there's the, uh, there's the grounded conversion. So if you wanted to use that same box to do a grounded system instead of a transformless system, you just install that field jumper right there and then you'd have positive in and positive out, and it would be good for 600 volts uh, single channel. And this is the four pole SOB, and pretty much just like it says, it's four poles. So it'll take, a, it'll take two positives and two negatives in, go through the switch, and put out two positives and two negatives. So if you had that same Sunny Boy, uh, you know, 5000 TL-22, and you had two strings of panels, you still need a disconnect, but you don't need a combiner. So this would work perfect for that. It would take your panels in, go through the disconnect, and come back out. 
Uh, I got a question here on the MNPV6 HV Disco 4X. Does Mindite offer additional plugs for the pre-knocked out knockouts? Uh, yes, the uh, the combiners should come with enough plugs to plug all the holes, except for the large conduit hole, and then it should come with enough strain release to bring two wires in per you know string. So if it's an MNPV6, it would be six strings. It should come with six strain reliefs. Um, so yes, it should come with plenty of knockout plugs to fill all of the holes if you didn't use any of them and punch your own hole for conduit, you know, for example. So again, um, simply put, it's four poles. So it's uh, two positives, two negatives in, two positives, two negatives out. This one also comes in 3R as well as 4X. And there's the wiring diagram for it, exactly like the two pole, just an additional two poles. And there's the 4X version of it. Same thing again, strain leaves, hole plugs, uh, clear dead front. And all of these are lockable too. They are lockable disconnects. You can actually put a lockout tag on there or a paddle lock on there when it's in the off position. And showing the field jumpers, if you had two MPPT channels but it was a grounded inverter, you could install these field jumpers and use the same box. So now we're going to get into the standard combiners, um, the, the basic line of combiners. This is the four string, what we call the basic MNPV4HV. And what that means is it does not come with fuse holders, fuses, strain reliefs, hole plugs, or lightning protection. So it is the only model we offer in what we call basic form. And also you'll notice the switch only has black wires. It doesn't have any red wires. So this could actually interface with the rapid shutdown but you will not get feedback from it that it actually tripped. So that's a remote trip switch, but it has no feedback circuit in it. And then we have the same thing, button deluxe. And as you can see, it does have the feedback switch. It does have fuses, fuse holders, lightning protection, strain release, and hole plugs. They both come with the clear plastic dead, uh, dead front, but this one does come with the lightning protection, the hole plugs, strain release, and fuses and fuse holders. They have both lockable. All of the red handles are lockable, so that's a blanket statement for any of our combiners or disconnects that have the red handle. And here's an example wiring diagram for the MNPV4. Basically uh, pretty simple. Four fuses, four positives. They combine and they go through the switch and on out to the plus. Here's a six string in NEMA 4X. The, uh, the, the four string is available in 3R only. The six string is available in 4X only. And again, comes the fuses, fuse holders, strain release, hole plugs, lightning protection. Um, and one of the other things is all of our 4X boxes come with pre-punched holes and hole plugs. So you don't have to punch your own holes on site. Pretty much the same thing as the four string, except for it's six strings and it's 4X. And there's the wiring diagram. Like I say, just two extra fuses. That's about the only difference. Now we get into what we call convertible combiner boxes. The 8 and the 16, um, the 8 comes in 3R or 4X, the 16 comes in 4X only, <coughs> and they are both convertible. And what I mean by that, they can, can be configured in three different ways. They can be set up as an 8-string single combiner. So you could go 8 strings all combined to a single positive on an inverter. You could go two isolated channels. So you could do four strings to one inverter, four strings to another. Or you could do a four-string transformless. So you'd use four of them for negative and four of them for positive and do that to a transformless inverter. They come with all the parts needed to convert it in the field. By default, they come set up for a single eight-string combiner. You just have to remove a jumper down here, and uh, that isolates it into two four-string combiners, and or change it out for transformless, where you'd actually put a bus bar over to the negative, and one of them would become negative. Um, again, all the combiners, except for the basic, come with the hole plugs, the strain reliefs, the lighting protection, clear plastic dead front, etc. And there are some ampacities to this. Uh, when you do it as a eight string, you have to derate the switch a little bit. It becomes 175 amps out for eight strings. If you do it as four and four, it's good for 100 amps per side. Or if you do it for transformless, it's good for 100 amps. 
And there's a wiring diagram showing all eight strings in parallel, as you can see, um, bonded together at the switch. And some of the perks of the convertibles, um, like it says, it's supplied of all of the high current copper bus bars. Um, a lot of the configurations allow you to remove a lot of the uh, bus bars and uh, the, the ones that are on the plastic standoffs, terminal bus bars, and then the copper bus bars. And basically, you know, when you're done the job, the goal is to give you everything in the box you could possibly need such that when you're done the job, you're going to be putting the whole plugs and strain the leaves in your toolbox. You're going to have a bag of extra copper, you know, and if you're doing four or five of these, you're going to have enough copper to take in and uh, recycle and, you know, buy somebody a pizza or whatever. Uh, and again, the uh, if you're doing it on a four and four, you will need a second SPD. If you're doing it on transformless or a eight string, a single SPD will work. It does only come with one just because typically that's the majority of the installations. So if you are doing it as two separate four string inverters, you would want to grab an extra SPD 600. And again also, every combiner except for the basic comes with fuses and fuse holders as required. So here it is shown up as uh, being wired for two isolated four channel inverters. So as you can see, the negatives are isolated and the positives are isolated. Still a single switch, but electrically it's isolated, allowing you to use that for two four-string inverters, or two separate inverters for that matter. And then there it is on a transformless system or non-grounded system. You know, you get your four negatives going through the fuses, your four positive going through the fuses, and the positive and negative going through the switch. Undoubtedly, probably one of the bigger challenges we're going to have moving forward is transformless and the fact that we have to, you know, fuse and disconnect the negatives. And there's its big brother, is the 16 HV. And again, just like the 8, uh, only it'll do 8 strings into two different inverters, it'll do 16 strings into a single inverter, or it'll do 8 strings into a transformless inverter. Everything you need in the box to accomplish the job, strain reliefs, hull plugs, lightning protection, dead front, etc. Only available in 4X. So now we're going to talk a little bit about remote trip breakers. And uh, what you're looking at here is just some of the breakers we have currently. This is the four pole I was talking about. It has two 100 amp poles isolated. So you could do two 40 volts AC. You could do two 150 volt charge controllers. Uh, pretty much, you know, your imagination is a limit. They're good for 150 volts DC per pole or, you know, 120 volts AC per pole. And then there's a one amp pole because the original intent of this was a ground fault protection device. Um, and then there's a fourth pole, which is a remote trip pole. This is the pole that you would pulse to shut the whole switch off. So when used, say, for an auto start generator on an AC coupled system, you could actually use the first, the one amp pole, for the two wire start to break the start signal, shut the generator off. You can use the two poles to break the 240 volts, and now you've completely isolated the generator. Uh, the MNE DC125, MNE DC 175 or 250, all available in remote trip. And then the uh, 600 volt DIN rail, 16 amp and 20 amp available in remote trip, and more coming in the future. So quickly, I'm going to go off topic a little bit and talk about our disconnecting combiners that are not rapid shutdown compliant. This is the MNPV6 Disco. And I'm don't know how many are familiar with this, but what you've got here is you've got the red handle that moves a mechanism inside that actually turns up to six DIN rail breakers off and on. And when I say six DIN rail breakers, I like to think of DIN rail breakers as poles. So it'll turn six poles off and on. So if you've got a 600 volt breaker, that already takes four poles. So you could put a, six, a single 600 volt breaker in here, as well as a 240 volt AC breaker, and make a lockable disconnect for a grid tie inverter that did not have a disconnect. Or you could put four, I mean, a 650 volt breakers in there. Use it for a charge controller, if you would, a 150 volt charge controller. You could put three of our 300 volt breakers in there and use it for like a classic 250. Or you can get the what we call the AC micro version that comes with two bus bars and holds three two pole 240 volt AC breakers and makes a slick little uh, disconnecting lockable combiner for micro inverters similar to Enphase. Again, not rapid shutdown compliant. 
And there is the internal workings. You can see the breaker poles. This green piece moves up and down with the handle and turns the breakers off and on. And again, all of our combiners, every one of them are available pre-wired. So if you want a 1,000 volt combiner with few solders pre-wired, we can do that. If you want a 150 volt combiner pre-wired of breakers, we can do that. If you want one of the new combiners pre-wired of pigtails out of the bottom or bulkhead connectors, we can do that as well. Um, different people like the uh, pre-wired combiners. It does uh, expedite time on site. We have a lot of uh, we have a few commercial installers that are using those because they don't have to get into the combiner and wire it. They can just crimp the MC4 connector on the end of the wire and plug it into the combiner. Keep on moving down the array. Um, some of the things on the horizon are a flush mount with flashing rooftop disconnect. Um, what we're calling the simple birdhouse or birdhouse 2 with the uh, contactor based systems and a thousand volt disconnecting combiners and of course our long promised arc fault combiners um, are you know also in the works. And I think that brings me to the bottom of the list so I'm hoping we get all sorts of questions. Yeah, being asked if we can get a copy of this presentation, yes, I, this is being recorded. I will uh, convert this and upload it to our YouTube account, and I will make that uh, public on the website. You can also feel free to email uh, webinars at midnightsolar.com or, or Rachel or myself, and we will get you a copy of this directly if you need it. Uh, being asked what the UL standard is for rapid shutdown, and uh, you'll forgive me for my ignorance on terminology, but it's not a standard like 1741. UL has put together a, I don't know what they call it, I'd almost call it a proposal, and it would, uh, it's, it's their definition of rapid shutdown, and they will list products to that until a code making panel does come up with an actual standard and at that point you know the original equipment would be grandfathered in for probably a couple of years and then we would re uh, you know relist it to the actual standard once UL puts a number on it but for the interim they're putting a what I would call a, a spec if you will and they're actually uh, listing to that spec and of course the birdhouse will be listed to 1741 and 690.12 compliant is what they're ta what they're talking about the system will be and how far away are the 1000 volt dc combiners um, not terribly far i i don't have an actual timeline on it but i would expect to see something hopefully before the end of the year Not seeing anything else. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, I got a hand raised. I will. Um, okay, let me answer this question and I will uh, unmute you and see if we can get you some audio. Does the remote trip combiner short the array when trip to get zero volts? No, it doesn't. It actually just disconnects it. So the um, the 690.12 basically states the voltage has to be disconnected within 10 feet of the actual array. So rather than shorting it, we just disconnect it. If I have power optimizers on my system, do I need rapid shutdown? Uh, that's an interesting question, and that's going to be left up to your AHJ, your authority having jurisdiction. Uh, as far as I know right at the moment, uh, neither one of the module optimizer manufacturers are actually claiming they meet 690.12. Now, I would suspect they will work on that and try to get that remedied. So that would be a question directly for the uh, module optimizer manufacturer. Will the flush mount disconnect be NEMA 4R? No, it will likely be 3R. Um, doing a 4X flush mount would probably be a little, uh, a little difficult. So I, 
and I don't, I can't guarantee that it may be 4x, but I anticipate it would be more along the lines of the other flush mount uh, flashable disconnects and be a, a 3R version. Uh, anything else? Anybody else got any uh, questions, comments? While we're waiting for more questions, I do point out that we are trying to do these um, every Wednesday. This is a holdover from last week when Robin didn't have enough bandwidth to host this. I uh, apologize for that. Um, we do have another one tomorrow on pre-wired inverter systems, and we are currently trying to fill our plate to do one of these every Wednesday. So we're open to suggestions for what we should talk about and or what time we should try to do these. So anybody that does have any suggestions, thoughts, or comments, uh, you're welcome to email them off to webinars at midnightsolar.com or call Rachel or I and talk about it if you want. So uh, feel free to shout at us anytime on that. Uh, not seeing any more questions. I don't know if anybody else has got anything. If not, we can wrap this up, and I will uh, get this video up online for everybody. Okay, I think that wraps it up for today. Anybody that does have any questions, feel free to shout at me, give me a phone call, shoot me an email, whatever you need to do. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time out to listen to me uh, talk about this today. And uh, until next time, this is Ryan and Rachel with Midnight Solar.